Luton Town versus QPR. The last time these two teams played each other, Luton won three-one at home. But both teams had a different manager at that point. Luton, we had Nathan Jones. QPR, they had Michael Beale. Nathan Jones has gone to Southampton, and Michael Beale has gone to Rangers. Luton, we brought in Rob Edwards. QPR, they brought in Neil Critchley, which I believe is a fantastic an appointment, and I will talk more about that later on in this video. But yeah, in that particular game, Luton were very good, especially going forward. Something which I haven't said too much um, throughout this season. We don't create that many chances and we don't score many goals. Hopefully, we, well, I say hopefully, all the Luton fans want to believe that Rob Edwards will change that from now until the end of the season. But QPR, on the other hand, I feel like they're hoping not to concede as many goals. And I do think that has been the story of QPR over the last couple of seasons. Great going forward. But at the back, that's where the weaknesses are. And from individual errors and just being too weak at the back, which is conceding them too many goals. And that's why I believe QBR haven't really been, you know, challenging for those playoff places because they just concede too many goals and they just fall short at the last moment. But anyway, heading into this game, as I've already mentioned, both teams have got a completely new manager. Rob Edwards, he's been given a really difficult period of time because he doesn't have the right players for his system because of the injury crisis which Luton currently has and also a suspension crisis because our defenders keep getting sent off they don't know when not to challenge when they're on a yellow card it's happened the last two games Amari Bell and Gabriel Osho both getting sent off despite not knowing that they have a yellow card it is getting frustrating and it will cost us games if this keeps happening Hopefully it doesn't and I don't think it will keep happening because that message will get you know displayed across to the squad Can you stop getting sent off? You're gonna cost us points But anyway, Amari Bell will be back for Luton um, in this game and yes, we're still gonna be weak at the back It doesn't matter if Amari Bell returns. We're still weak. We don't have Reese Burke We don't have Sonny Bradley two actual center halves that could actually help us in this game so yes, January is a very important time for Luton and we need to bring in some defenders in and I really hope we do it quickly. So that's the current situation which Rob Evans has at the moment. But he does go into this QPR game on a fantastic win at home to Norwich. 10 men as well. Woodrow scored in the last minute. It was a fantastic finish. And I actually thought the performance of the game, we actually deserved the win again. We actually, yeah, did deserve to win the match. Even though we did get a player sent off, it didn't make a difference. We still were attacking. We still were going for the win. And yes, we obviously left that game with three points, which was great. And I did think, you know, that first half performance, we, sh we should have scored three or four goals um, in that first half. The amount of chances which we did get was great. However, there is an injury concern to Adebayo as he did come off the pitch injured. Don't know too much on what's happened there. But I will watch um, Rob Edwards' press conference this week heading into this QPR match to see if he is fit and ready to go against QPR. But if he isn't, Woodrow scoring that goal, scoring his first looting goal since we've brought him back into the club is great. Um, and hopefully that builds his confidence up. We've got Cornet, we've got Jerome, so attacking options are still there. Um, so we shouldn't worry too much. QPR, on the other hand, obviously they're under life under um, Neil Critchley, who, in my opinion, is a great manager. And it, it was someone who I actually wanted Luton to look at to bring in um, to be our new manager. Now, Neil Critchley, he left um, Blackpool after a very successful spell there, getting them promotion first time of asking from League One to the Championship. And then the second season, it was just a really solid season for them. You know, mid-table finish. I think Blackpool fans would have expected that um, just to stay away from those relegation places and have a really solid season. I felt at the back, Blackpool were very good and he made them solid enough. And he also, going forward, they were quite good as well. They were dangerous when they needed to be and they played really good football. And I do think he will bring those you know attributes to QPR. I think the first thing he will do at QPR is make them solid at the back. I do think that's been the weakness of QPR over the last couple of seasons, as I've already mentioned. 
and then he will look at their attacking options because their attacking options are there, you know. You've got McCauley Bond there, you've got uh, Lyndon Dykes, you've got Cher who can cause problems, and you've got Willock as well. You've got those attacking players with quality to score plenty of goals. It's at the back, I look at QPR at the back, and I just think you're just not strong enough um, to compete for those playoff places. But if Neil Critchley can bring in a few additions, like what Luton really need to do in January, I do think... You know, this season, QBR could actually challenge for those playoff places. And I do think they've probably got a better chance of doing it rather than with having Michael Bill at the club. Um, that's just my opinion. I just think Michael Bill is just really inexperienced. And I just don't know how he got the, the Rangers job. And I don't know why Wolves offered him the manager job as well. Apparently, he is the brains behind Steven Gerrard doing extremely well last time um, when they were in Scotland together for Rangers when they won the league. I have a few question marks over that, um, you know... It, you don't really know the truth, the in the ins and outs. But yeah, I didn't make anything of Michael Bill, and I still don't now. There's nothing that's screaming at me saying, you know, he's a top manager, he's the next upcoming big thing. There's nothing that suggests to me that he is. Um, but we'll soon find out, and he may, you know, shut me up in a few years' time when he's doing extremely well in the Premier League. Who knows? But yeah, I feel like QPR, their situation, they've appointed really well. I thought. I think over the years they have had good managers in Warburton doing doing a good job, but he just couldn't get QPR over the line. As I've mentioned, those defensive problems have been an issue. But over the last eight games, QPR going forward are not haven't really been the greatest. And now I know we've had the break as well, so it's really hard to see if they are going to be poor in front of goal this time round. But they've you know the last eight games, you know they haven't scored many goals, and that's obviously a good positive for Luton because with our defensive crisis at the moment you know it does mean our you know defenders hopefully won't have a busy day but this game it is a really big game you know if you guys didn't know the off the pitch you know situation involving these two sides you know since the 80s has made this game always like a big rivalry um heading into it and it always gets picked for sky sports it always does um it gets picked over sky uh, on sky sports over you know Luton playing watford for example so you know the message is there you know you're going to get a good game here and you get goals as well you get um lots of goals frequently and um, when these two sides um face each other it's a six o'clock kickoff which i find weird on a Thursday, a bit annoying, but it is what it is. So the atmosphere should be good. Um, there should be a lot of tension in the air, and I'm excited to see what could potentially happen in this one. I do expect goals, but now I'm saying that, I'm kind of expecting um, a nil-nil now. Just And I would take a point away from home against QPR. Um, we just need to, Luton's perspective, just need to just keep getting games over the line. Um, don't lose as many and yeah just try and get to January quick as possible try and be injury free and suspension free and then bring in these players in that could help us climb up that championship table I don't think both sides are going down we I think both sides are just a couple additions away from actually challenging properly um, come the end of the season and we will soon find out what will happen to both sides at the end of the year let me know down in the comment section guys who do you think will be the more likely to challenge for those playoff places between Luton and QPR? And yeah, let me know your pre-match thoughts heading into this game. It's going to be a big one, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how well both sides do. But I'm hoping, obviously, my club, Luton, get the three points, and yeah, we end the year on a high. The Canada year for Luton, this Canada year for Luton has been great. Let's hope it continues in 2023. But yeah, those are my thoughts, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy the video and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.